this pilot absolutely impressed me. This is one of the best pilots that I have seen on HBO, okay? One of the best pilots, period. Hey everyone, welcome back to Candid Cinema. I'm Amanda, otherwise known as AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Today I will be reviewing The Last of Us, Season 1, Episode 1, entitled When You're Lost in the Darkness. So, I'm going to preface this by saying I do not play the games. No spoilers for me, please, for future episodes. I know it's out there, that's fine, I get it. But I wanted to go in blind, and it's really important because I am feeling everything for the first time, whereas, you know, game players have experienced the story multiple times because it's so, so incredible that I've heard, you know, everyone raves about this game. And hopefully when I do have the time, I will actually play it through. <laughs> um, but I think it's good to have both perspectives. So those who have played the game versus obviously those who are going on blind as like a regular television series that they're watching. But I have to say this pilot absolutely impressed me. This is one of the best pilots that I have seen on HBO. Okay. One of the best pilots, period. The setup within the first 10 minutes when they're at the, you know, they're at the talk show and they kind of go through what this organism is, what this illness is. Um, and I think that that's like perfect setup. It's really quick. It's fast. You're asking the questions that need to be asked. And then the audience is in the know of like where we're living, the time period, how this mutation is going to come about and it's like looming it's looming because you're like you're setting that within the first five ten minutes of this episode when does it kick in when does it come in so you already have that like little anticipation planted in the back of your head and that was a very very smart opening for those who haven't played the game and you're introducing them to this this world that you're building also on top of that to have the creator of the game neil Druckmann, okay as executive producer, writing it with Craig Mazin and like adapting it from the video game is the most important aspect of this series. And that's why it's going to be so rewarding because you have the creator, the person who came up with this concept, who came up with the storyline directly involved. So they're not going to literally mess this up. They can't mess their own story up at all. I don't think that that's possible. And that's why I think that this is going to be one of the best video game adaptations ever. And you could feel, you know, within the first, I guess, 15, 20 minutes of this first episode that he drew directly from the games. I've seen that they're like direct shots that are being, um, you know, explored here and taken from the video game directly, which I admire and I appreciate that he's even doing that. So, like, you have these things, these emotional moments that are incorporated into this episode, incorporated into the series, and that's what's working. I loved the father-daughter connection between Sarah and Joel. I think that Pedro Pascal absolutely nailed this role within the first episode, I'll get to certain scenes later, but he's phenomenal in this. It's like he was born to play this role. He's so good. I'm a sucker for a father-daughter storyline, and this is not one that I should have held on to, but for me, it was very natural and effortless. They didn't overdo it to make it believable. Nico Parker is just a doll. She's fantastic in this. Again, it's the subtleties that I really enjoyed within the first episode. Wasn't over the top, wasn't heavy handed, wasn't exaggerated. It was like the perfect beats to make up this pilot so everyone can understand these characters, the motivations, the objectives, just all of that. It's perfectly set. And it's not overstuffed with information that we're not going to understand. So I love Nico Parker. I love the connection that she has with Pedro Pascal. It was really sweet. She went to, you know, fix his watch, which is also very important, as I have been told. So she she fixed his watch for his birthday. And that's when everything started happening. There were helicopters, you know, the lady at the store had to like close early. And it's just, it's confusing. It's like, well, what's happening? And because Sarah, who's played by Nico Parker, you know, is just moving slowly through everything and she's observing and she's trying to see what's happening. She ends up going to her neighbor's house. Going to the neighbor's house was creepy. It was just creepy. She helped her out, took some books. But the old lady in the chair, you know, you don't really see it in the background, but you kind of catch something fishy. 
it's fishy. You hear cop cars constantly. The sound design for this within the first episode alone, when she exited that shop, I was like, wait a minute, stuff is changing. Everything feels like crispy. The sound feels crispy. I'm like, this is this is weird. You feel the shift, which is impressive beyond words because how are you feeling the shift as an audience member? It rarely happens. But when it does and that suspense clicks in, you are sailing through this episode. Okay? So she ends up going home. Joel comes back. It's his birthday. She gives him his present, which is the wash that's fixed. And she found this old DVD that, um, you know, that he used to watch with deleted scenes and they, you know, they just stay up together. And it's a really cute father-daughter moment. She ends up falling asleep. He gets a call from Tommy, who's actually in jail and joel's like oh my god okay i have to come bail you out he leaves and sarah is by herself in this house she hears helicopters there's lights booming within like you know i think it was like five o'clock in the morning and it was really weird or it was like three in the morning and you hear everything you hear what's happening outside the lights were really important because they were it was just like different it was like green and blues and yellows. You're like, what the hell's happening? And then this is where it starts to pick up. And the score as well is fantastic. It slowly builds the more that Sarah explores, you know, her surroundings. She's trying to figure out what's happening. Doesn't know that her dad's there or not. And she gets like a little pitter at the door. It is a little doggo who is absolutely adorable and um i'm like let him in let him in because it's a dog and you don't know what's happening out there so she stumbles into the neighbor's house bad call her walking the dog to the neighbor's house the dog's barking not to go into the house he books it girl why are you going into the house sarah goes into the house because her next door neighbor she knows her the suspense i stopped breathing I stopped breathing. I literally stopped breathing from that point on. How? Why? I couldn't even tell you. It's just the way I was feeling. It was insane. Walk through. She's calling for her neighbor. No answer. Then she notices that there's like blood on the floor and it directly leads to the old man. And he's sitting in the corner, blood gushing out of his neck. Okay. And he's just like trying to speak and he can't. Nico Parker, great performance because I was shook. She was shook. Sarah's walking towards the dude. The camera placement and the movement to show you what needs to be seen at the proper time, it's perfect. We're not noticing anything else in the kitchen. The camera slowly turns to the old lady who was sitting in the chair, and you can clearly tell that she was infected. She was infected. She looks up. There's the little... Well, I it was just the most disgusting thing ever, but I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. And she slowly moves up. You see the little thing, like the pincers, I guess, or the legs of the thing, whatever it was, it was in her mouth. Okay. I was like, can't do it. So that was crazy. She books it. She books it out of the house. She doesn't know what the hell she just saw. The old lady follows her. Holy bejesus. I still can't breathe. Then conveniently as per usual joel literally comes out of nowhere and he's like get in the car and i'm like oh my god this is gonna go full force we're gonna like freaking lose it what's happening then you notice that more and more people are infected they're in this van tommy's in there joel's in there and uh and sarah's in the back seat and they're trying to get out of the city they're trying to get out of here absolutely impossible planes are overhead but i'm talking about like they're like skinning the top of the cars okay planes are coming in everyone's losing their minds no one's trusting like anybody else on the road no one's getting out clearly because joel's like someone will go get those people that are on the side of the road that's not gonna happen but sarah's freaking out in this van the camera placement was everything the movement in the way that it kept rotating to like the back, to the front, to the side. You had it literally in the middle in between Joel and Tommy. And I thought that that was incredible because you're looking right through the windshield at what they're seeing. But obviously due to the lighting and that it's at night, you don't know what the hell's coming up. You don't know what's going to happen. 
And the fact that they kept changing to like look in the rear view, look to the side, look to the front, you're stuck in there. And it feels so contained that you're in this car. This is the only thing that's really keeping you safe right now. And you see like hordes of people, you see cars, you see the military, you see everything happening all over. So visually, it's just so full with everything that's happening creating those layers of tension because on top of that you have the sound design you have the sirens wailing you have these uh, like helicopters overhead you have the military on the radio you know and then the radio's busted and it's like it's just so much tension and suspense because you don't know if they're gonna get out of there these people are infected you know, and they built it so well. I think it's one of my favorite sequences that I've seen was being in that van, that truck that they were in trying to get out. It was incredible. Then once they left the highway, they went back into the city, that airplane crashing and you see it through the rear view mirror with all of those people walking around like that just floored me. It floored me. And you're getting lost within that scene. You're getting lost in that van with them. And it sucks you in. You're in. That's it. You're invested. You're invested in the characters with barely any form of like dialogue. There's some dialogue, but it's not heavy. Okay. And it's just visually interesting. You're getting more through the visuals than actually having conversations because they set the tone early on. And I think that that's really important storytelling because you're showing us what's happening. You give us little pieces of information and then that's why we feel it because we're overthinking in our heads. You don't have to overstuff it with like this jargon that we're not going to understand. It's the marriage of visuals and then visual storytelling with little information. And the more information we get, we're the ones working our minds. I only spoke about the first 20 minutes of this pilot and I'm still not even like fully into what happened in this episode, which is absolutely incredible because there's so much to say. So then after that, you know, we get a very very emotional scene which is like panel for panel what happened in the video game so what happens next they in, end up getting hit sarah hurts her ankle she can't really walk and now tommy and joel are kind of divided because of this like big like pile up there's fire tommy's on the other side so he tells joel listen get to the river just get there don't worry about it Joel books it, books it with his girl. He's running. Then he sees someone who is infected and he's trying to get away from them, but he bumps into the military. So now the military doesn't really care. If you're infected, you're going down plain and simple. So Joel tries his best to talk him out of it. He's like, I'm not infected, blah, blah, blah. It's dark. You don't know what's happening. You don't know who's shooting who. So it was kind of like a bang, bang situation. Joel and Sarah go down. They tumble down the hill. But you don't know if the cop was dead or whatever. But then I think, you know, Tommy came around clutch time. So we're like, okay, cool. Joel's fine. The second that the cop goes down, Joel hears Sarah runs to his daughter, which I seeing the frame per frame of what happened in the video game and then actually in the show was pretty awesome. And Sarah ends up dying i was just like in shock and then in that moment i breathed when i mean that i did not breathe that entire time my mouth was like uh -uh. like what when she died i was like holy lord i can actually say something now because i was frozen that whole time Talk about a fantastic opening. One of the best openings to get you sucked into this world. It's perfect. Now we have a time jump. 20 years later, you have this like post-pandemic America. It's like very run down and it's just, it feels eerie. The whole thing feels eerie. You have like this kid wandering through the town. He looks like he's going to collapse in any second. And it's just a different universe entirely that we've entered 20 years later. We have an older Pedro Pascal, which I'm like, he looks really good with the gray. Like you just, you nailed the aging of Joel because he looks even better. That's all I'm saying. Pedro Pascal looks good in everything, but just the gray, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. He looked great as an older Joel. I shouldn't say that, but it's true. So we get to see how he's living. We meet some other characters. We meet Tess, who's played by Anna Torv. We meet Marlene as well, who's kind of like overseeing Ellie, who's played amazingly. 
by uh, Bella Ramsey. I really love her. We have these new characters added. We have to see the world that they're living in. You know, simple things like trying to get a battery for a car is what Joel's trying to do because he has to get to Tommy. He hasn't seen Tommy. It's a very simple type of situation that they're trying to get out of there. They're trying to pass time. But also Joel is haunted by the fact that, you know, his daughter died. He's still haunted because that's the, that's the last thing that he remembers, you know, and that he holds on to. And it's the fact that he's stuck in this like loop. It's a vicious cycle of like, we're all still like worrying that there's these creatures out there that this, you know, this infection is still going to go viral and it's still happening 20 years later. Like that's just exhausting, you know, and then you have the quarantine zone. You have these different areas. You get introduced to like Phaedra and the fireflies and what, you know, those groupings mean. And you have like clear divisiveness within the world as well, which ends up happening when you don't know how to control something, how to contain something through like a pandemic long story short you get to have these like little side missions which it feels like with joel and trying to figure out what he's doing now and what he's thinking about now and who he has connections with at the moment so as joel and tess try to like move out to get this battery pack for you know for the car to get these parts marlene actually wants to get ellie out of there because Ellie is a very important person from my knowledge. I don't know why, do not tell me. So Ellie's a very important person. There's a scene between Marlene and Ellie and they kind of give her a bit of a backstory that she was an orphan, she ran away. The beautiful thing about Bella Ramsey is that she's fiery. She's so fiery, making Ellie one of my favorite characters instantly. The same time that Joel's trying to get out with Tess, he's exploring this like basement uh, he sees this like gigantic creature just like plastered on the wall. And I think the creature designs looked really sick. They looked really cool. Again, planting the seed of what's to come. How does one become like that is the other thing. What are we going to see with these people and uh, the extent of this illness? So I thought that was really cool as well. But in the same breath, in the same hallway, Joel sees Marlene and then this kid, <laughs> Ellie, is uh you know she pops out of nowhere and it was just so funny that joel just like threw her against the wall i was like whoa relax but obviously that's your reflex because you don't know what's coming at you again it's all very quick fast paced we're setting all this up and marlene's basically like we have to get ellie out of here tonight and joel's like okay but i have to do x y and z i have to go get tommy but then he needs the job he wants to do it and tess said the exact same thing so that's how it's set up joel has to take care of ellie and then ellie's literally a little shit but she's so smart and she's so on the ball that joel can't handle that he doesn't want to handle that but she is like intellectually on his level uh so we have like a little bit of banter between the two of them in regards to the radio and the songs that do come on i think these little things that neil Druckmann and craig mazin chose to incorporate will stick in everyone's minds as a television series forget that it's a game right now but what they planted in the television pilot is really important because it's gonna stick. As they leave the area, they do get caught. One of the cops is kind of like being a stickler with them. He's scanning them if they're affected and they're not. Tess obviously isn't. Joel obviously isn't. And they're trying to bargain with him. He's not following. So as he goes to scan Ellie, Ellie just knifes him, obviously causing problems. And in that moment, two things happen. Joel gets between the the military man, the soldier, and Ellie. Instant flashback to what happened with his daughter at the beginning of this episode, which is amazing that they kind of like framed it, they bookend in that just to take him back. And like those little moments trigger him in that way. And it's emotional. So in that case, he is about to, you know, get shot again. We have no idea. He starts wailing, literally knocking the daylights out of this guy Okay, beating him to a pulp, getting his anger out, and he just do he doesn't know what came over him. He has no idea what came over him, but in that instant, that protective fatherly instinct that just kind of like like radiates off of Pedro Pascal in every single moment, it's the fact that you're already you're so emotionally connected that you're like, yeah, you know what? I understand that happening. And then you look, he looks back at Ellie, he's like, what just happened so we have that to kind of explore then right after that the scanner turned red after they scanned ellie 
So they're like, what? They're like, she's infected. She has to be infected. And then she kind of explained what had happened. You see all these like lines on her on her arm. And it's like, well, how did that happen? That doesn't make any sense. So we have that planted for future episodes. They do end up going through the wire, the gates. They go through it. And then we see like no quarantine zone, like what's what's going to happen out there. Then as they venture out into the city, you see the towers, you see the buildings. It just looks like so grimy and old, very gothic type of look as well. You know that we're about to embark on a journey and a half that will have plenty of surprises because that's what it felt like. You are anticipating what's about to happen, but all you know is that they're set up that Ellie's a very important person. Joel still has that fatherly instinct that he is going to go back into his past and kind of relive certain things with Ellie, which is going to be difficult for him, but maybe that'll help with his healing process. So we have a taste of what the connection between Joel and Ellie is going to be for the future episodes, and I think it's going to be incredible. The performances are already incredible. Again, I don't know the ins and outs of this story, but I am so blown away by the production value in this first episode, let alone what we're going to see in the series. I think the cinematography is fantastic. I think, again, the score really comes in at the right time. It builds slowly just to kind of lock you in. This is, for me, like 10-10 first episode like one of the best pilots I've ever seen in my life. It is so strong. For me to stop breathing for a good, I don't know, 10 minutes, like in shock of what's happening, that is incredible. The suspense is incredible, okay? They really just captured the essence of a video game as well, especially through perspective. The camera work in this is impressive as well, and I'm just absolutely floored with this pilot. I'm floored. It's 10 out of 10. It is fantastic. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen every Sunday. I'm so stoked. So please let me know what you thought about the pilot episode of The Last of Us. I think it was fantastic. Let me know in the comments below. I will be trying my best to cover these weekly along with awards season. It's going to be tough, but I can do it. I'm really excited to do it for you guys. Please let me know in the comments how you feel about The Last of Us. If you played the game, do you think that the first episode really captured the essence of what the gameplay was, what the storyline was? Do you think they missed a couple beats? Where do you think it's going to go? go where do you think it's gonna stop this season that's that's my question for you guys so let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe you can always follow me over at amx nda reviews on twitter instagram and letterboxd i'll catch you guys next time keep watching movies